Whenever we discuss who the greatest StarCraft II player of all time is, these are the two names that pop up more so than any of the others. What I've got for you today is a best of two series and then an ace match as well between the two players that, well, many consider to be the greatest players of all time. So spotting right here, in the very first game, we find ourselves on the map Oceanborn, playing with the Red Zork pieces. We have none other than Serral and his opponent down in the bottom right with the blue SCVs. He goes by the name of Maru. Serral going up against Maru. It's been happening an awful lot as of late. And I'm here for it, man. For the longest time, these two managed to dodge each other in every single tournament they played. But then recently, they've been playing against each other a lot. The only problem is that I don't think Maru has really done uh, yeah, yeah, particularly well. If you've watched any of the premier tournaments this year, you may have noticed that Serral has been smashing Maru. Now, this particular series is from the WTL, the World Team League. So that means it's a best of two format for this particular match. And then I also have, well, apparently the final game that was played that day, um, which is the ace match. So we're gonna have a look at a best of two series, which will be the very first games, and then the last game is gonna be a an ace match. We're gonna we're gonna basically have a look at the very best players in StarCraft 2 face off against each other. The reason I bring up though that it's the WTL, other than the format, of course, it's a best of two, which is a little bit confusing, is that it's also played from the comfort of your own home. Or I guess for Serral, it means that it's played from the comfort of his military base. I'm not exactly sure where Serral is currently located, but I, I believe he rented some office space close to the military base that he is at. Because, I mean, in case you're out of the loop, um, he's currently doing his mandatory military service over in Finland. Um, now, he's luckily for him in a branch of the military that allows him quite a bit of time to practice as well. And to apparently still compete in the events. If you're a Korean, from what I understand, if you are in the military, you're not allowed to make any other income. Meaning that, uh, yeah, if you're a programmer, you can't really plan anything. But anyways, Maru gets to play from the comfort of his own home, and I think he's going to be pretty happy about that. Usually, Maru, he performs really well, especially in Korea. He's obviously one of the all-time greats, but he does not seem to be quite as dominant when he's playing away from home, when he's playing away from Korea. Always very good. I, I, I mean, I don't really like pointing it out so much because he's still incredibly good. But there are some players that simply power up whenever they're playing at home, or at least close to home. And then some players that, uh, yeah, just seem to deal with things like, for example, jet lag and sleeping in a hotel and all that a little bit, yeah, a little bit better. I always feel like Sarah was one of the very few players who actually performs better when he is playing away from home. Maybe it's because everybody else plays relatively worse. Like, maybe everybody else performs at, like, 95% of their capabilities whenever they're playing away from home. Um, Serral always just seems to be, uh, on point. Anyways, it's gonna be a quick 1-1-1 right here for Mr. Maru. So we've got ourselves a nice triple CC opener. It'll be Hellions together with what seems to be Benchies here. Everything is very, very normal. Likewise here for the Zerg player, it's been a triple hatch opener. No two-base shenanigans where Serral is trying to do some of that Raynor Mass Muta style. We're not doing any of that. No queen dropping. Nothing. Nothing like that. Honestly, I'd be very surprised if we're gonna see somebody like Serral play something that unstable. I guess that's the best way to put it. Those strategies are just not really his forte. He likes to play very rigid StarCraft 2 and... Well, sometimes I guess that also can be his downfall, where he's a little bit too predictable, because he likes doing the same thing over and over and over again. But then again, Maru does the same, right? Maru also not really somebody who does, uh, yeah, does a lot of mixing it up. There's variations of the same theme, I guess. We may see every once in a while, uh, I don't know, for example, a Viking, right? That's kind of like a variation on a theme, but still a very tame variation. Generally speaking, these two play very normal StarCraft. Now, normal is something they've effectively invented themselves. Okay, so this is a little out of left field right here for Serral. He's opting to go double Evo before Lair and before a Baneling Nest. This used to be the common style to play back in the... Uh, well, when was this? Like, maybe 2018 through like 2021, something like that. Um, I'm just... Pulling those years out of my... Anyways, it used to be a very popular style and then it got replaced 
with the much more popular these days quick lair with a quick baneling speed. But ever since the baneling got nerfed, a lot of programmers have been mixing this in once again, although I haven't seen it as much from Cero, I don't think. The extra barracks coming up in the meantime on the other side of the map. We've got ourselves a double NG bay as well in the back of the natural. Gases, in addition to the ones that were already done. Barracks number four and five. Third command center has now landed on the low ground. This is all very, very normal. Yeah, so he's prioritizing the double evolution chamber upgrades before the baneling nest. Before the baneling speed, of course. We we'll have to keep an eye out on exactly what he does with it. This does leave him a little vulnerable. So there are some attacks that the Terran player could go for that can catch the Zerg off guard. The idea is that you can cover a lot of those attacks off. The attacks at least where you don't have Baneling speed yet. You can cover a lot of those attacks off by having a ridiculous amount of creep. So that's exactly what Serowo is focusing on right now. He's effectively got six queens ready to spread the creep and to also just, well, protect it. And as long as you get Baneling Speed done eventually, you should be okay. But it is an absolute necessity that the creep threat is on point with an opener like this. Double Infestation Pit? That's gonna be a mistake. Is Cero human? Mmm, I don't know. Jury's not quite out on that yet. I think, I think Cero is probably as human as Maxpex. Yeah. And uh, the jury is not out on that yet either. Double Infestation Pit is a little funky though. Hunter Gas down the drain. He's also lost a bunch of workers though to that... Uh... Oh my god, only a Reaper has gone down so far. Huh. Anyways, he's also lost a little bit, I guess, to... Uh... To the other Banshee that was going to town in the natural expansion. So nine drones in total. Nothing all too crazy though. Nine drones at seven minutes is quite recoverable. Straight Hive, plus two, plus two. Is this a classic case of 10 minutes no rush? Is that what we're doing? We're just doing 10 minute no rush on a very, very high level, huh? Hey, we're only seven and a half minutes in, Maru. What are you thinking of, sir? You're allowed to send Hellions and Banshees out, maybe a Viking, maybe a Reaper. But this looks like an attack to me. I don't know what the rules of 10 minutes no rush are, but this looks like an attack to me. Maybe he's gonna pick up and get him out of there fast. Okay, all right. No Marines was, okay, no, no Marine died. Everything's fine. This game might still be winnable through diplomacy instead of murder. Barracks six, seven, and eight coming up. We'll probably see a Ghost Academy momentarily now that the fourth command center is done. Drilling claws coming. We do need to see the second upgrade here in the engineering bay. Maru human? Oh my god. These guys are being surprisingly human today. Yeah, he actually forgot the plus two. Five dropper lords coming up. This is something actually that Sarah has been doing a ton as of late. It seems like this is exactly what he wants to do in every single one of his games when he's playing. The quote-unquote perfect early game. Now, obviously, there have been a couple of minor mistakes here, but whenever he plays a comfortable early game, this is what he does nowadays. Five dropper lords. And then we're gonna send units across the map. Usually, it's a bunch of Zerklings for now, but sometimes he follows it up if he has it, obviously, with Lurkers, too. There are no Lurkers in this game. Instead, it's straight Adrenal Glands, and... Are we gonna go an Ultra Cavern here, maybe? I don't think an Ultra Cavern would be a great choice, but... Zero is effectively just playing Muta Ling. Or not Muta Ling, sorry. Ling Bane. Maru, by the way, reactivated his artificial intelligence and decided to go into a uh, yeah, quick rundown of all the upgrades. A little bit of troubleshooting, managed to get the plus two done. Um, so that's my main question here, though, for Zero. Like, yes, you've got all the tech you could ever need. Yes, you've rushed out all the upgrades, but it's just Zerkling Baneling and then a couple Vipers for support. Is that enough? He's waiting for Adrenal Glance to finish, which is done right about right now. Blinding Cloud? Okay. Parasitic Bombs? Okay. Are we just done making any other unit than Ling Bane right now? 
Is this the new Zerg meta? This is effectively a timing attack. He borrows a couple Banes too in the, in the mineral line. This is effectively a timing attack from Zerg, but it's a timing attack that didn't happen until 10 minutes in. Serral definitely kept to the 10 minute no rush rule. Look at this, Maru's just dead. It's basically over for Maru. What? It's a Zerkling push. Okay, well that one of mine was juicy, 28 kills. So Zerks have been looking at all the units at their disposal and they're like, you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. Zerkling, mmm, I like it. This is fascinating to me though. Like Terrence, oh, are we gonna blow them up? Banelinks, oh, the Banelinks, yeah. <laughs> he gets four mules. Oh, that's another like thousand minerals down the drain, more than that even. It is fascinating though to me how after all these years of StarCraft 2, right? Terrans have gotten really good lately at countering lurkers. They've gotten really good at dealing with all the other late game shenanigans from the Zerg. Brute Lords are kind of mediocre. Ultras kind of suck. Hydra Lurker is strong, but Terrans have gotten really good because it's, well, the only thing Zergs have been doing as of late. Raynor's been playing Mutas, I guess. That's fair enough. Although I'm not 100% sold that that is the greatest strat. Serral just playing mass Ling Bane. It's effectively an adrenal glance timing attack. How curious. 10 minutes into the game. Here's the Zerkling drop, at least attempt it. Those parasitic bombs are really nice though. I don't want to undervalue those, uh, those Vipers. Okay, well maybe Maru isn't dead yet. He hasn't dealt with all of the burrowed Zerklings, because as we all know, Terrans are allergic to making ravens. Lovely splits here on the links, Mitigating a lot of that splash damage, although there are some big hits as well on those mines. Retargeting here manually is Maru. He retargeted so long though that the Zerklings and the Banelings just got the kill. I think Serral has just cleaned up this game. He just... I have not seen anything like this in a long time. GG, wow. Okay, so here's what Serral did. Delay the lair in favor of faster upgrades. So first 100 gas was Zerkling speed. Then at about 100, I think 200-ish gas, he went double evolution chamber, started up double upgrades when the evo chambers were done. Next 100 gas went into a lair. When the lair was building, he made a Baneling Nest. When the lair finished, he went into Baneling Speed together with an Infestation Pit. When the Infestation Pit finished, he went straight into a Hive. And then when the Hive finished, he went straight into Adrenal Glance. And he attacked as soon as Adrenal Glance was done. That is a mighty late timing attack. That is like, it's like a, like a, like a, I mean, I was gonna say Battlecruiser timing attack, but that comes out much earlier. It's kind of like a... No, there's no real other example for Protoss and for Terran that makes sense in my mind. Like a Tempest timing attack would be, at least as far as like tier three tech goes, be identical, and we've been seeing those quite a bit. But Tempest timing attacks hit significantly earlier. Like it took several 10 minutes to build that up. Hmm. I honestly think that maybe the Terrans at the highest level have gotten a little too comfortable with their builds. Like, Maru was already starting to prepare for the Liberator transition, he was ready to go into the Mass Ghost, not scouting whatsoever what Zerk was actually up to. There was no indication, like when you're playing against Mass Ling Bane, there is absolutely zero reason for the high tech, right? There's no reason to go into that many additional command centers. There's a lot of autopiloting going on. And I think what's happening right now is that some of the Zerg build orders that we've been seeing over the last few weeks are just punishing Terrans that are just on autopilot a little bit too much. Because historically over the last year, I think it's fair to say that whenever Maru gets to play a long game, he wins. And he was sort of checking. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple bases for the Zerg. There's a bunch of upgrades. Sure, sure enough. Everything seems quite normal. I'm just going to keep 
autopiloting into whatever I've been doing and what I've been winning with. And then suddenly we have a gajillion zerkling showing up, a blinding cloud on the siege tanks, a couple parabombs, and it's clear that the Terran cannot stop the zerk flood. No shenanigans with Hydras, no Mutas, no Infestors, no Swarm Hosts, no Roaches, no Ravagers, just Zerklings. I don't think it's a stall we'll see for too long. I, I really don't think it's gonna, but I, I, it will It will force a reaction though. It will force a reaction from the Terrans to scout for something specifically and to see what it is they're actually playing against. Obviously, Terran can always... That's a major mistake right there, too, actually, for Maru. Like, losing the Reaper like that is... A clear indication that he's a little tilted. But yeah, I, I think I think that's that's probably what we're gonna have to see. Keep in mind that Terrans can always just scan. Like, it's not like you can't spare a scan into the main base of the Zerk at the 10-minute mark. Or maybe a little earlier than that. Like, maybe, like, 8 minutes in. You can scan the main base and see what's up. You can tell what Zerk is gonna do when the high finishes. They could certainly spare it. But, yeah, I think there's a little too much autopiloting here. And, well, Sarah has found an opportunity. So what are we gonna do this time around? Well, everything's uh, identical. Other than the Viking. Maru has skipped the Viking, but Sarah is doing the exact same thing. Let's see. There's the lair. So now he is going lair before Evo Chambers. Are we gonna go double Evo after Baneling Speed or are we gonna do something else? Normally we'd see the Baneling Nest start up when the lair is about right about a quarter or so of the way done so you can line up the upgrades. Cloaking Field once again coming up for Maru. Not bad whatsoever. There's the Baneling Nest indeed. And I would imagine it's gonna be Baneling Nest into double upgrades. The thing is though, with this particular style here that Serral is going for, you can't do the build that he went for in the previous game. Unless he wants to attack with less upgrades, which would kind of negate the entire idea of a timing. So I don't think we're gonna be seeing a similar style. I think he will probably go Hydra's this game instead. I'll have to keep an eye out on it though. No, it's Mutas! Oh! Serral also going Mutas! It's like there was a meeting, man! The Zerg players just had a meeting all together and they're like, You know what? Lurkers, no longer my best friend. My new best friend is the Zerkling again. It's always been my best friend. We didn't see each other for many, many years, but you know, when we were reacquainted, we suddenly realized that, yeah, no, we're, we're still best friends. Yeah, I've heard many stories of the Zerk Cabal. Supposedly, I'm one of the members of the Zerk Cabal, is what people have told me. Now, I will not be able to confirm nor deny anything. But it does seem that Hydras are just no longer the Zerk's best friend. Hmm. I think this is straight Mutaling Bane. It's a different approach than what Raynor recently did. So Raynor recently played some games against Klim, of course, where he went mass Muta. I'm talking like a hundred Mutas. This is a different way of getting there. This is a more Serily way. Serily, is that a word? Serily. Anyways, it's a more Serol-like way to go into Mutas. Much more eco and a little bit later on into the game. It's a variation of the same theme, I guess. Again, not really much scouting though here for Maru, right? Like, Maru doesn't know any... Like, he's not going any timing attacks. He's just chilling on his bases. Maru trying to not die. Oh, we have a scan. Okay, he actually sees something. So that scan over there is an important one. Because he caught that at the perfect moment. Props right there to Maru, actually. He saw that and it gives him time to make these missile turrets. He would have probably liked to start it up three seconds earlier, but you know what? That was close to perfect right there for Maru. Now he's got a missile turret in every mineral line. 
And he caught those units right on the tail end. If he would have not seen that, that could have been a disaster already. But that makes this game a hell of a lot more manageable right now for Mari. Fourth command center in a little bit of trouble. Okay. So the main problem usually, at least historically, that Zerg players run into is that, well, Muras just kind of died to everything. Marines, Widow Mines, Thors. But we learned from uh, from watching Raynor play is that you need like 700 APM and you can play Muras. Yeah. All you need to do is get 700 average actions per minute. Just play faster. Hello. Stop playing slow and play faster instead. Yeah. It's so obvious in hindsight. Okay. So anyways, the Benchies have sacrificed themselves to buy a little bit of time and they got some damage done in the process too. They forced all the Mutas back home. And this has given Maru a little bit of time to prepare. We've got 2-2. Two, two. So what I would really like to see from Maru here is like a bit of a timing attack. What Clem did was play very aggressively out on the map, but not really commit to any big fights. What Clem did against uh, Raynor, that is, when Raynor played the Mass Muta style. I wonder what Maru is going to do from here. So he's got barracks 6, 7, and 8. I also think Clem actually transitioned really quickly towards, like, Liberators and Ghosts and all the rest of it. I wonder if you could just sit back, actually. Maybe you don't have to go out onto the map. Maybe it's possible for Terran to just... Wait until 3-3 upgrades are done and just keep playing the survival game. Because ultimately, a Muta-based army can never fight a Terran army when it's maxed out. Like, it's not gonna take the fight straight up. It's not gonna happen. Unless Terran somehow went accidentally into Mass Marauder, you know? Generally speaking, and this engineering way is gonna die. So that actually really throws a... Ooh, that is such a big problem right now for Maru. Um, you know what? Everything I said, throw it out of the window. None of that really makes sense anymore. I was suggesting that Maru was gonna sit back until 3-3 is done, because that's when he hits his massive power spike, and when those Marines are not really killable that well for Mutas anymore. But now that he lost the plus two attacks, like it was supposed to finish up with the plus two infantry armor, now he has to begin that upgrade. Everything's been delayed by several minutes. I wonder if sniping the NG Bay is actually the most important thing a Zerg can do. Anyways, Maru is still gonna go for the attack. He is still going to go and try and test the waters. I don't know if I agree with it though, because this, this creep threat here from Serral is looking ridiculous. Again, Maru has been playing very passively, so he doesn't have any track on the creep at all. Yeah, this is a tilter, man. Like, this is an absolute tilter of a game for Maru. Just... Hmm. Serral's running circles around him. He's even mined out the mineral fields over here, on the back of the Terran's third, so he can start running in Zerglings. As long as the Zerg here does not fly into a bunch of Widow Mines, or into a bunch of Thors, He's gonna be extremely far ahead. And now we're getting to Muta numbers as well that are actually capable of killing command centers. Like, missile turrets are no longer enough to keep the Terran player safe. He gets one of the Widowmine hits, fair enough. Yep, Zerklings can go in now. There's a Siege Tank, easy kill. Another Siege Tank, another easy kill. Apparently there's now enough Mutas to really get it done. Now, Zerg did take a little bit of damage in the meantime economically, but this is totally fine for uh, for Cero. He decides to go into an Ultra Cavern. This is much earlier than what Raynor was doing. Raynor didn't get his Ultra Cavern until like minute 25. But I think Cero has got Maru exactly where he needs him to be. I think this is basically him saying, yo, I've got him stuck on four bases. And as long as Terran is stuck on four bases, life's gonna be good. Now, he is trying to sneak out a fifth command center here at the nine o'clock position. We have a 
A little bit of uh, the opening is being widened right now. Sarah wants to have a uh, a large amount of space to maneuver around. He wanted to become neighbors right here with Maru. He's mining one of the bases that normally is an easy one for Terran to acquire. Look at the bane links. There's 56 bane links. Serral's got money for days, apparently. He had about 20 bane links too many to kill this. Didn't need all of it. Decides to send back whatever he needs. Matter of fact, did not quite catch that uh, that Thor. <laughs> the Zerg players are angry, man, after the EWC. Ay, ay, ay. They are not having a good time. Jeez Louise. Maru poked the bear. It's funny how Mutas have been considered such a terrible unit for years. And they have magically found their way back into the meta over the course of the last couple months. The only downside to this mass Muta stall is that I think there's going to be a lot of Zerg players watching this and they're like, ooh, shiny new toy. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna go well, man. I really... Yeah. Sarah and Rainer make it look real good, though. I will agree with that. Okay. Ultras are coming. Maru is still going into... Th uh, goes together with Thor's here. He still has a lot of command centers. But it's about time we make a move. Now... Maru forgot plus three attack. After the plus two got denied, he restarted up plus two, but he never started up plus three. This is the sign of a, a panicked man. He's been busy putting out fires left, right, and center. All of his bases have been uh, exploding. Hey, yeah, yeah. All right, finally, Maru moves out. This is not the move, Maru. This is not it, my man. Ay, ay, ay. Nope, 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 nope. He just lost a massive chunk of his supply, just like that. Yeah, he finally had the army he's been building up this entire time. And then he just lost like 20-something supply of it for essentially free. Command center in the meantime goes down. Dude, these Mutas are gonna be home in time to defend as well. Yeah, these Mutas are working a second day job. And they're still going to be in time for dinner. They're so fast. Uh, it's clear that the top level Terrans have no clue how to address the Mutas. They have just no idea. They've got a, an understanding of how the unit was always played back in the day. But it's been so incredibly uncommon as of late that it's pretty clear that they are just a little out of the loop. Honestly, this kind of looks like Sarah is beating up on somebody in like Diamond League, man. Like, <laughs> it doesn't even look like they're playing the same level. Like, Maru's playing good, don't get me wrong, like, but this, this is his only chance. Like, he needs to win with this army. Yeah, some nice splits, but the numbers are just not there. Like, look at the supply count. Yeah, it's just not enough. GG. Now, I've got one more game. I've got one more game between these two legends. So far, Serral is making Zerk look extremely broken. Well, I'm not convinced that it is, <laughs> but he is making Zerk look extremely strong here. It reminds me a little bit of that series that I casted recently of Serral going up against Hero. That second series they played at the EWC where, well, Serral just walked all over Protoss and it wasn't even close. Anyways, what are we going to do right here on Side Delta? So this particular match right here is the Ace match. So the WTL, like I said, it uses a Team League format. So it's a best of two all around. And then at the very end, you have 
what they call an ace match, where you can send out one more player for each of the teams. And apparently, Team Basilisk send out Serral, and Fatality ended up sending out Maru. Well, so far, this has been a uh, very nice match for Serral. It's all played on the same day, by the way. So the previous games were played on the same day as this particular one. It's about maybe an hour later or so. So maybe that gave Maru a little bit of time to like reset mentally, because so far it seems like Serral is just toying with his food. Do you think Maru is going to change his strategy up? I am going to say nope! Maru does strike me a little bit as quite a stubborn player. Because he just does the same thing over and over and over and over and over. I think he's going to play triple CC Hellion Benchy. No double barrack shenanigans at the front. No second factory with like cyclone shenanigans, which is what we've seen. For example, Clem mess around with a little bit. Definitely no mech. I think he's going to play barracks, factory, third command center. We see a reactor on the barracks, then the reactor is gonna switch over with the factory. We're gonna see a starport, the barracks is gonna reland and make like a tech lab. Starport is gonna get the tech lab. And then we end up with Heli and Benshi. To be fair, the early game wasn't a problem in the previous games that we've seen. The early game wasn't the issue. It was just that Maru was getting outpaced really hard in the mid game. Which is a little surprising, because normally Maru is very good at playing defensively. And that's honestly the only thing he had to do. But every time the Mutas ran in, he was either defending the Mutas or the Bane Links, right? He wasn't defending both. Maybe the pacing of the Mutas is just a little too fast right now for the players to be used to. So Serral has already scouted this. Serral already knows perfectly what he's playing against. So he's going to be able to play into that very well as well. He's already seen the timing of everything, and he now knows that this has to be a... Triple CC into a, well, very likely Hellion Benshi. It could be, for example, a Liberator, if you want to mix it up. Very minor mix-up. I don't think it's better. No, he's just going to do the identical start. And while this is a good build, it does make you very predictable. We've already seen a couple times now that Raynor can also punish this build, not just by playing something a little cheeky in the mid game, but by going, for example, into like a like a two base queen drop. Right? We've seen the two base queen drop with the quick uh, the quick uh, overseer in the mix as well with the Zerkling flood and with the Roach variant too. Like, there's a couple of different things you can do against this style against the Terran and. Uh, yeah, Zork actually coming back in right now, so we're checking out what's going on, sees the cloaking field upgrade, like all of it is becoming a little too rigid. Now historically Terran players have been very successful doing the same build over and over and over again. Innovation comes to mind. Remember the Terran player Innovation? The least innovative Terran of them all? I'm pretty sure he picked that uh, that nickname before he realized what the word innovation actually meant. Pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure he just thought the word was cool in English. But anyways, very uninnovative Terran player was known for playing literally the same thing every single dang game. Every single game. And I think it was good back then. Even though it wasn't great back then, I think it was good back then. But I think in modern day StarCraft, you can't really play the same thing every single time. The maps are too different. The opponents are too good. I think you have to do at least like minor variations. Minor variations just to keep the opponent guessing. Because now Serral is just playing exactly what the perfect response is. That's the problem, right? So back in the day, people didn't really know the perfect response to everything. But what Serral is doing here is the perfect response against Heli and Benshi. Well, I mean, he's apparently skipped one of the spore crawlers over here. Maybe he caught the bluff. No, he actually did that on purpose. So he knows that it's probably Clug Benshi, but he only made a single spore crawler. Yeah, the upgrade got cancelled, so he didn't make that many. Okay. Now, this is not necessarily a, um, a deficit right now, though, for Maru. He's fine. The nice thing about triple CC is that you don't need to deal any damage in the early game. Any damage you deal was usually a bit of a bonus.
Painting speed. Double upgrades. Are we gonna go Hydras? Normally, this would be the time to put down... If you wanted to, at least. Your tech structure of choice. There are a lot of timing attacks, by the way, that Terrans can go for. I know all of the Terrans believe all of them suck. But there are so many. Like, Terran is probably, as far as openers go, the most flexible race. Maybe as far as, like, Terran opener tier lists go, this is, like, the S tier build. And there may, be R, there may not be other S tier builds, other than maybe, like, the two of Rex opener as well, with the Triple Reaper, but... There are a lot of A-tier builds, like tons of A-tier builds, and I would like to see some more of them. Because it just makes you a little too predictable, but anyways. Queens are dealing a little bit of damage here. Serral, by the way, not going into any tech. No, so this is good though for Maru. Sniping a bunch of those queens makes life much easier. But there has been no Hydra then, no Infestation Pit, no Spire, it's Burrow. So he's rushing out Burrow and I guess a whole lot of Overlord drops as well, though in this game he hasn't made those yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're gonna go there too eventually. We're just back to making the good old basic unit. Zirkling is gonna Burrow, fourth command center coming up, second factory at the front. This entire Zerg army is burrowed over here on the left. <laughs> Alright, Maru had full vision of it, but as we all know, we never see ravens. Here's the Ling Raven or the Ling Zerkling army though, thinking about running in. He's gonna bust the front? That's the plan? I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, well, unless Terran's not looking. Yeah, if Terran's not looking, then suddenly it can deal damage. It's also because there was a fight over here on the other side of the map, but judging right here by the Terran corpses. Not every single one of those Terran units made it out. Medivac drop goes into the main base, but Saral is already set up over there too. There's the OV speed. Here's the Baneling roll by to watch the third. Run away, little SCVs. Whew. Eight, eight of them still go down. I think there's going to be more on the back of this too. Look at the minimap. Suddenly there's just... Zerk everywhere. Oh. It's just Ling Bane. It's just Ling Bane. There is nothing else. We're not doing anything with any other tech. Apparently the 100 gas or so that you waste on a Hydra then should be spent on, on four extra Banelings instead. It's like Cero finally managed to get his car into sixth gear. And he's just putting his foot down now. That's what we're gonna do. We're just... We're just going as fast as possible. And once the speed is going, we're no longer slowing down. Ling Bane going all around the map. And the floodgates have now been opened and Maru clearly is not holding on. Now, I know there are some people out there that say that Adrenal Glance is too strong of an upgrade. This is a build that's on Lair Tech. We're not even at Hive. This is just 1-1 one, one Zerklings. There's, like, 2-2 two, two is gonna finish up right now, but, I mean, this has been just Lings and Banes. These are the most unchanged units for many, many years, other than, I guess, the Banelings now having 5 HP less, right, compared to where they used to be. But... Most of this strategy has always been an opportunity. It's always been possible. Widowmind Drop gets scouted here by Serral. He sees this coming in from a mile away. Maru does not see the Overlords. Sporecrawler is already repositioned. Uh, these links are not quite well upgraded enough to really get rid of all of this immediately, but Serral's still dealing with all of this just fine. Planetary Fortress coming up over on the left side of the map. Widowmind Drop has been dealt with. Overlords are now headed into the main base and gonna start unloading the links. Marines and Widowmines are gonna desperately get into the main base. Command Center can no longer morph into a planetary. 
Keep in mind, we have Burrow, too. There's still, of course, no Raven. And without a Raven, Burrowed Zerklings all over the main base. Yep, this is the classic. Super annoying. This is going to take multiple scans to deal with. And since these orbitals are in the air and you cannot scan, as long as the command centers are in the air, you, you can't do anything. He's scanning over here at the front. Zero so on Burrows, a bunch of Zerklings in the main base. GG. Wow. 